So, what are the stages of follicular development? We we might be knowing the, about the folliculogenesis. There are so many primordial follicles in the ovary. So, this process of folliculogenesis happens from the intrauterine life. The process of the germ cells will be undergoing mitosis and meiosis in sequential manner. And there will be around millions of uh, germ cells, primordial germ cells in the ovary. And there will they will be undergoing series of atresia so that I birth, by birth or around 1 to 2 million of primordial germ cells or primordial follicles are remaining in the ovary. Again, this will be going on atresia and various stages of development. And in the reproductive lifetime, you will be having only around 400 of follicles which is going to be ovulated. All the remaining primordial follicles are in a way it is wasted by various mechanisms. So, it will be around 7 to 8 million to begin with. By birth, it will become around 1 to 2 million. Slowly, slowly, it will becoming less and less and less. And by menopause, it's around 1000 which is remaining. That is the end point, almost end marks the end point. There are a group of primordial follicles of this a group, a fixed fraction of the primordial follicle is going to be developing in every cycle. So, the, suppose there are 1000 primordial follicles. Around that, maybe 10 primordial, this is an example, not the exact number, 10 may be developing in the, uh, that is entering into the cycle that can be further growing. If there are 100 primordial follicles, instead of 10, only one will be coming. This is just an example. So, what I mean to say is this is just a fraction. There are 10,000 primordial follicles, 1000 might come, that a fixed fraction of the primordial follicle will be developing each month that of this fixed fraction can develop into bigger follicles if we are stimulating them properly but generally only one follicle from this will develop remaining will go into attrition we will be discussing this in details so there are a group of primordial follicles they will be developing and once once it is coming to a certain stage then a hormone called follicular stimulating hormone or fsh can act on these follicles so, the readiness to be acted upon by FSH, this is described as recruitment. So, recruitment is a process by which a group of follicles or a fixed fraction of the primordial follicles undergo certain changes to be ready to be acted upon by FSH, as simple as that. Once the follicles are recruited, then among the cohort, only one follicle is going to be selected. So, one follicle is going to be selected from the recruited follicle. That is a selection. How this selection is happening, we will be discussing soon. And this follicle will be becoming a dominant follicle. So, recruitment, selection and dominance, these are the classical phases of folliculogenesis. Primordial follicles, recruitment become ready to be acted upon by FSH. They will be called preandral and andral follicles. Once they are reaching the andral follicle stage, then they can be acted upon by FSH and FSH will cause the development of the follicle and ultimately one follicle will be ovulated. So, this is in a nutshell about the basic things which is happening in the ovary. See, this fraction, this how is this recruitment happening? This recruitment is not under the control of any any gonadotropins, FSH, LH, whatever gonadotropins are available, whatever hormones are coming from the hypothalamus or pituitary or from anywhere, it cannot alter the recruitment. Recruitment is a process which is happening by the influence of some intracrine and paracrine factors. Intracrine means inside the ovary, paracrine means somewhere from the adjacent areas it is coming, it is not very clear. There are so many things which are supposed to be influencing recruitment, but generally all these things are not very well supported. Possibly your growth hormone and androgens, this might be improving recruitment. This theory has been put forward because administration of growth hormone has been utilized in various clinical scenarios where the patient is developing less number of follicles or a diminished over and sore patient. We can administer growth hormone clinically as injections for certain number of days and once you are stimulating those ovaries for IVF or something, they might be getting a better response. So, growth hormone possibly do have a role in recruitment but it is not very clear. Another important thing which might be having a role in recruitment is androgen. 
this postulation has been uh, put for, forward because they have seen that in PCOS patients where there is hyperandrogenism, there is seem to be increased rec recruitment of the follicle around 4 to 6 fold increased recruitment of follicle seen in PCOS patients. So, possibly hyperandrogenism do have a role in improving recruitment. Again, there are many clinical trials and studies suggesting androgen administration for improving the follicular development. It is not very well supported but still it is widely used in clinical practice because as such androgens are not that costly but growth hormone is costly so growth hormone is not having that much clinical relevance. So recruitment is happening, we do not know how it is happening. The final days of recruitment around 10 to 15 days or the final jumping of the recruited follicles into the cycle to be acted upon by FSH. The final part of recruitment again FSH is having a minor role. So, final role is by FSH. Then FSH will maintain its growth. Then it will uh, continue its development. These follicles are having some important features. This is very, very, very important concept. If you are understanding this, you will be able to understand why monofollicular development is happening. What are the important features of the dominant follicle? There are three. Number one, you will be coming into the subsequent slides, this thing. It is having increased FSH receptors. The dominant follicle is having more FSH receptors which is induced by FSH itself. So, FSH induces its own receptors in the follicle. Number two, the dominant follicle is having aromatase activity. What is aromatase? We all know. Aromatase is an enzyme already I described. It converts androgen to estrogen. So, the follicle will affect Actively synthesize estrogen. Number three important feature of this dominant follicle is the secretion of inhibin. Inhibin B. Inhibin B is the hormone in the follicular phase. Inhibin A comes in the luteal phase, which is having another function. So FSH receptors is there, aromatase activity is there, inhibin B secretion. Because of this increase in FSH receptors, the follicle is extremely sensitive to FSH. So, if, if a follicle is having two receptors, another follicle is having 50 receptors. The follicle which is having 50 receptors will be more sensitive to FSH, whereas the follicle which is having only two receptors will not be that much sensitive to FSH. This concept is very, very important. So, these are the features of dominant follicle. There is a concept of FSH window and how does monofollicular development happens will be coming in the next slides. So, rescue and recruitment already I told this is happening over a period of 2 to 3 months around 85 days is the approximate time which is needed for recruitment that is what they are described in the textbook it's a theoretical explanation. So, if at all we are giving any agents or any medications to improve the recruitment like growth hormone or androgens or something we have to give at least 2 to 3 months. If you are giving just 10 days or 5 days it won't work it won't improve the recruitment even if we give for 2 to 3 months it might help or it might not help, it is not very clear, but we are hoping and we are having many clinical experiences that it might be helped. So, clinicians, we use androgens or growth hormone to improve the recruitment. Considering the cost factor, which I have already told, we generally use androgens in various forms to possibly improve the recruitment. Majority of this time is independent of gonadotropins. Ultimately, towards the end, FSH is having a role in the final part and recruitment is defined as the readiness, readiness of follicle to respond to FSH selection. Androgens and growth hormones probably do have a role. What is selection? The dominant follicle is selected by day 5 to day 7 of the cycle. In a 28 day cycle, I am telling everything about a 28 day cycle. If it is a prolonged cycle, it may be varying. So, what are the important features? It is having increased FSH receptors, so it is having more sensitive to FSH. Aromatase activity will convert androgen to estrogen, inhibin B secretion. Because of this inhibin B and estrogen, estrogen and inhibin B is having a negative feedback effect on the pituitary. So, what will happen? Inhibin and estrogen will go and inhibit FSH from the Pituitary. So, FSH secretion is coming from the pituitary in a pulsatile fashion. We will be coming to that. FSH secretion is inhibited by inhibin and the estrogen. So, what happens? The FSH level falls. But this follicle, which is having more receptors or more sensitive to FSH, will continue to grow because it is having more receptors. It is sensitive. Whereas the other follicles, there are so many, around 10 to 15 follicles are there might be in the patient. These follicles will not be having this increased sensitivity to FSH because they don't have more FSH receptors. So they won't be able to grow further, they will be going into attrition. 
this is responsible for the monofollicular development so once a follicle is selected that, that fo follicle is very much lucky enough to be selected it is having undergoing certain changes at a certain point of time it is ready to be acted upon by fsh fully and fsh will act on it that will be selected that will become dominant follicle that will kill other follicles by inhibiting fsh whereas it is not suicidal because it can grow its in on its own because it is more sensitive to fsh so inhibin b and estradiol is going to decrease fsh and you will be having the other follicles which are going into attrition so this is very very important this concept is responsible for monofollicular development in a natural cycle